of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today.
begin a spread of prayer and I started thinking who do I know who do I know it doesn't matter how many people I'm just gonna send it out and ask for everybody to pray we start crying out to the Lord and receive a lot of word of prayer and affirmation for her and uh, uh, about three hours later she he was found he was found alive and well Hallelujah. that's the God we serve and when we come together in prayer something happens so I want to encourage one of you how many of you have been healed of something physical there's many of you that have received healed the healness in your body how many of you have been healed you want to raise your hand all right now put them down now how many of you need prayer for a sickness that you're facing raise your hand really really high all right all right so we are a body so I'm going to encourage those of you that have been healed, go to the ones that need healing. If you are right next to them, please, the ones that are he uh, needing prayer for any sickness or disease, raise your hand. Raise your hand by faith. I don't see them. Lift them up, lift them up, lift them up. There is nothing impossible to God. There is nothing impossible. Don't be ashamed. If you are in need, this is the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now gather around that have been receiving healing. Gather around somebody that needs it. Hermano Flores, ven aquí a orar por María, porque María necesita oración. Aleluya. Acérquense a María, perdóname mi conciencia, que me ha dejado que usted quiere. Aleluya. Necesita sanidad, levanta tu mano. Whether it's a broken heart or a broken bone, God wants to heal you this morning. Aleluya. Whether it's a broken soul. Aleluya.
Hallelujah. The Lord has said that today, Hallelujah, is a day of healing. Hallelujah. And to remove all unbelief in the name of Jesus. Yes. We come in agreement and remove any unbelief, Father God, any doubt, Father God. Father God, in that spirit of unbelief, Lord God, we cast it, we kick it out, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today is a day to praise and exalt Him. He is the healer of healers, physicians of physicians, doctors of doctors, the name which is above every name, the name of Jesus. Keep on praying if you haven't got your healing. Keep on praying. The Lord wants to do a breakthrough on this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
How many have had God do something good for you this week? Looks like just about every hand. You know why he did that? Because he loves you. But also because he's good. Amen. You're so good. Yes, you are. 
God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. God, you're so Congregation, your turn. Let's sing it out. just the voices. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so One of the ways, one of the ways he's been good to us is that he's placed us in a family. He's given us brothers and sisters, friends. Greet your friends. Greet your brothers and sisters. Give them a hug. Give them a handshake. Give them a high five. Give them a kiss on the cheek. Spread this love around. Enjoy the fellowship, the communion of the saints in this moment. We know the Lord is very good. Amen, amen, amen.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How good is the Lord? He is so good to us. So, so good. Well, I know each and every one of us that came this morning received the bulletin. And in this bulletin, we have the announcements. And we will now go through them one by one to read all of the announcements. So you can just take your own time to read them. Right now, we'll be worshiping the Lord with our offering. As you know, we have worshiped the Lord with praises, songs, and jubilations. Now it's time for our offerings. But the Lord said, bless is a cheerful giver. And even if you don't give, he blesses you. Amen? So at this time, I'm going to just pray for our offering. And then you can come right up here and put the offering in the offering box. And this will help us to continue the work of the Lord. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before thee at this time, Lord. We bring our cheerful offerings to you to bless them. Bless them abundantly. Replenish our resources that we will be able to give and not give in deceit but gave in happiness. For those are the words of you. Say, those who gave, I will replenish them. Even if we don't give, you're going to give us because you love us. Father, we bless you and we honor you. We praise you at this time through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You can come forward with your offering. As we pray our offerings, I will just want to read this one passage from the book of Psalm 107, verse 14. And it reads, He brought them out of darkness and broke their chains. Amen? So I know God is breaking our chains today of poverty, breaking our chain of deceit, breaking our chains of of faithfulness. Let us continue to glorify him because he is the greatest. There is no name giving honor heaven that is more greater than the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And we will now say blessings to all of you as we turn the pulpit over to our pastor. Good morning, good morning. Actually, we got, um, he mentioned she's going to read also the apostolic prayer for this week. So here she is. First Thessalonians 3.12. And may the Lord make your for one another and for all people grow and overflow just as our love for you overflows. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Thank you, Heman. God is so good, amen. The man, he uses even this is out of the mouth of babes, he has what? Perfected praise. Hallelujah. 
And that's why we're inviting our little children to be re reading the apostolic prayers, which we'll be uh, focusing on today. Uh, apostolic prayer done by Paul. Man, a great man of God. Where I, I don't know if you remember when we talked about a couple of weeks back about how Paul was converted and how God just got a hold of him and it was a dramatic change in his life. Amen. And we're going to be looking at his um, pr uh, prayers today and focusing on the apostolic prayers that they did. So we're excited to deal with that. Amen. Also, another thing that God was showing me today was that don't feel afraid to jump up or sing or praise the Lord. Amen. He says, uh, there's a the saying that, that says, I'm going to let my hair down today, right? You know, I even do it by faith, right? I don't have hair, but I do it by faith, you know. And they, so I'm going to say that in Spanish too, que se dejen soltar el pelo, ¿eh? que se baje hasta abajo, ¿eh? por fe, ¿eh? que yo lo hago si no tengo. <laughs> but we're going to be looking at Ephesians 1, 17, 20. And we're going to be looking at the prayers that Paul, the apostles, had when he prayed and it's something that we were talking about healing today, and there was a, I think there was a little bit of doubt going around, but God wants to break that off. And the word he gave me when we were, before we started praying was that removing the stumbling blocks that the enemy has put be, before us. Has put these stumbling blocks. And today he wants to help us remove those things, and he wants to show us who we are in him. Amen? Let's read Ephesians 1, 17 to 20 really quick, and then we'll get into prayer it says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding, meaning your heart, be enlightened, that you may know by experience what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is exceedingly greatness of his power towards us who believes according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him and seated him at the right hand. Amen. Wow, what a powerful verse. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Father. We thank you for your love and mercy you are pouring out on this morning, Lord God. We thank you for the privilege and honor it is to come before you. And just, Lord God, lift our hands up, Father God. Lift our voice up. Father God, lift everything that we are up to you and worship you, Lord God, and give you thanks just for getting us here this day, Father God. We give you thanks. We give you the honor. We give you the glory, Lord God, that your name is above all things, Lord God. And may you open our hearts and, and minds that we may receive this word that you have for each and one of us, Father God, on this morning, Lord God. May it penetrate our souls, Father God. Let it not just stay here, Lord God, but let it go home with us, Father God. Let it carry it in our hearts. Let it be sealed, Lord God, and break off the old man, the old tradition, the old religion, whatever it is that's holding us back, Father, that we may see the revelation of the work of your word that wants to be working in us on this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare this word, Father. Amen. God is good, and all the time, and I can say that about testimony last night, right? I guess God wanted to throw a testimony at us before today. <laughs> I know the powerful one, what God did and how he moved and he, he is faithful to his word. Amen. Amen. He is true to his word. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, about the word of God, how it is true and how the apostles prayed and things would happen. Even though their, their life was on the line, they declared and they dared believe God for what was going to happen. And so the introduction here is a Paul's one general prayer here is that the Father would give his people increased understanding of the knowledge of God so that they would experience three expressions of his glory, the hope of his calling, the glory of being God's inheritance. Wow. Just receive that right there, God's inheritance. We are God's inheritance. And walking in the power of God. Who wants to walk in the power of God? Amen. Man, every hand should go. Come on. It's like, if you don't want to, I don't, what are you doing here? God wants to give us that inheritance. Amen? Amen? Point number one says to walk in confidence, hope related to God's calling, his assignment for our life. Hallelujah. His assignment. And I went to look up another verse 
in Ephesians 2.10. It might not be in your outline there, but Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. Can I say that one more time? But I'm going to say it this way. You and I are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So if you don't know him, today is the day to know him. If you want to get to know the masterpiece that God made you out to be. Amen? And it says, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So in case there is doubt in your mind that God wasn't setting something up for your life, that the enemy has lied where they said that God didn't care about you, I think this verse spells that out. Amen? Plan for us long time ago. God has been looking at your life for many, many years. He's a, even when he for, formed you in your mother's womb. Here we go. Jeremiah 1.5 says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. So kick that doubt out that nobody cared for you. Even if you were a mistake being born, God says, I knew you. See, I had a plan for you, even though you were born maybe as a mistake, but I have a plan for you. Maybe they never loved you, never liked you, but I had a plan for you, and I have a plan for you today, says the Lord. He says, before you were born, I set you apart. Wow. He says, and I, I and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. You don't have to be a pastor up here like me. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be some great man or evangelist to be a what? A prophet to the nation. You can be somebody. You can work with somebody from another nation and just teach them about the word of God. Take your time and sit down with them and show them. And imagine that man that you taught him that word and he goes and preaches to nations. There's a lot of men in history that are great evangelists that men were encountered like that. Wilkerson was one of them. I know Abraham also. Billy Graham was one of them. And then, um, uh, and then um, I can say maybe my life where I came from. That somebody preached to me when I lived in the old county over there in the little town of Yuma. Amen. Yuma. Woo -woo. Yeah, my sister, right? Woo -woo. <laughs> Summerton. Small little towns. Who knew that something good was going to come out of there? Amen. But God was gracious and he was merciful and loving. Point number two I'm going to bring out of this introduction is to know who we are to God as his inheritance. How he sees us and he feels about us. Isaiah 43, 4, and it might not be there also. Isaiah 43, 4 says this. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you, says the Lord on this morning. Wow. Thank you, Lord. That's how you see us. The great things, the exchange you did for us on the cross that we deserved. He says, I'm going to take your place and I'm going to give you life and I'm going to give you inheritance. He says, that's how I see you and that's how I feel about you. Point number three is to experience God's power in your life. In our mind, because there's a lot of things going on right now lying to our minds, amen. In our heart. In circumstances, a lot of things going around and our circumstances around right now. And in our ministry, he says, I want to show up in my power. What's going on right now in the revival in Kentucky, right? There was nobody special or big name person that went down there to start that revival. Nobody except the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God was displayed there, is being displayed there, and is doing miracle signs and wonders. There's a, there, he's introducing himself to the young people there at the school. That's all he's doing. And they're like receiving something that they never experienced. There's people coming outside because they're hungry all the way to the university just to get a taste of what the reality of, of God's power and, and nature and, uh, and whoever he is. Amen. They want to discover it. And God says, I want to show that these were the apostolic prayers that Paul did. Amen. And he wants us to also take a hold of them. 
Point number B is that Paul had just outlined aspects of God's glory referred to as spiritual blessings in Ephesians 1, 3 to 14. I'm not going to read it right now, but you can write it down. Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 14. According, it, it talks about this richness in, those, in that chapter, in those verses. This is a, one of the most comprehensive statements in the Bible describing how God lavishes grace upon his people. Ephesians 3, 1, 3 to 8 says this. Ephesians 1, 3 to 8 says this. I'm going to read this part. and says, the Father, pay attention to this, the Father who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us, having predestined us to adoptions as sons and daughters. Amen. In him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Do you want to know how you have redemption, restoration, forgiveness of sins? Right here is talking about it. And it says, according to the riches of his grace. You see, it's not by you. It's not by what you can do or what you have done or how much you can do. The other day, me and my son were talking about um, tithing. And you go, hey, Dad, if we had a million dollars, how much would you give to God? I'm like, I'd, what would you do with that money first? And I'm like, I'd, I'd give 10% to God. He goes, oh, okay, wow. He goes, what if you did 100 million? I'm like, I, I still, you know, give 10% to God. And then he went up to a billion, right? And then he went to 100 billion, right? And he was just seeing that and seeing that. And, and then he goes, what if it's trillion, yeah? And, and the point is that we can now give God. I told them in the end, it all belongs to him. I go, it all is his. According to the riches in grace. That's how big our God is. If he owns everything, if he owns all the cattle on the hill, he owns a down the cattle, if he owns everything. If he has, you don't think he has the power and the authority to pour out the grace that he wants to give us this morning? Doesn't matter where you came from, where you or where you're at in life right now. Yet he can do that if he wants to. Those are the apostolic prayers that Paul was praying. You see, we got to go back a little with Paul, who he was. He was an angry man. He was persecuting Christians. He was after them, right? He was in, he was mad at them, but yet he had an encounter with the Lord Almighty. God thrown off his horse, hallelujah. How many of us need to be thrown off our horse this morning, amen? So that the Lord have an encounter with us on this morning. And he was angry and mad. But yet the grace of God was so great. He goes, I, I need to get this, this man, Paul, because I know if I get a hold of his heart, all that rage, all that anger, all that persecution against my people, he says, I'm going to turn around and use it for my glory. I'm going to use it to pour out my grace that he can be a representation of my grace unto those who were like him. Amen? Man, we should shout out right there because he came after us and did the same thing with us. And he goes, I'm going to use you. He goes, I want to use you to use my, my, push out my grace unto the people. Amen? Now we see... Paul appealed to God as the God of Jesus and the Father of glory in Ephesians 1, 17. Hallelujah. Let's see if I have that one. I'll do it in a minute. I'll go back to that one. It says, uh, point number one, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do you put this? He goes, this includes what God did with Jesus in his humanity. As an ideal picture of what the Father is committed to ultimately do with his redeemed people. Hallelujah. It says the Father of glory. Hallelujah. Here he goes. The, the glory that the Father possesses. Hear this. The glory that the Father possesses is the very glory that he imparts to his people in salvation. Ooh. 
He gives it to his people in this age according to our hunger for it. Hallelujah. The glory that God has, the, the glory that he is, he wants to give it on to those who are hungry. Do you believe those people over there in the University of Kentucky are hungry? I think so, right? But I think we are too. And I think God is going to hear that cry over covenant of grace. And he's going to see the hunger. He says, right here is the place I'm going to deposit on my glory. Amen? I think he's doing it already. Point number D, it says, the spirit of wisdom, a relation, and the knowledge of, of him, who? God. This is Paul's primary prayer here was that God's people to know or encounter him by receiving more of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I think Paul had a revelation, amen? And that their eyes of their understanding or their heart be progressively enlightened by the spirit. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1.18 says this. It says, I pray that our hearts be with our hearts will be, <clears throat> excuse me, will be flooded with light. So not just a trickle, not just a drop. This should excite you right here. It says that the hearts be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident, here's the word right here, powerful word, confident hope he has given to those he called. Be confident. And what God has called you, amen? He says, his holy people who are ri his rich and glorious, what? Inheritance. Wow. The inheritance that we are to him, amen? Hallelujah. Man, I'm going to have to get my tea or water here. Sorry, my throat's a little dry today. Oh. It says... Where we're at here. Okay. Number one, and uh, another point there under D, it says the knowledge of God. So we're, uh, we're talking, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back a bit, where he says, talking about we are blinded sometimes, we are a little bit in a fog that God wants to remove. And that will happen with time, and as God gives us wisdom and revelation of who he is, we will start see, seeing clearer. We're we'll start seeing where to walk and where we're not to walk and where to go and where not to go. That's God giving us his wisdom and revelation. Amen. He wants to do that, and I know he's done that in a lot of our lives. And we'll go forward because that happened. Another example was Paul. It says that he was blinded. <clears throat> he was in a rage and after his people, amen. But yet God stopped him and had an encounter. And Paul had to have a blindness for a while, but after he took off that veil that only God can remove, amen, that only God can remove off our eyes that we may see the glory and everything that God wants to share onto our hearts, or everything that God wants to reveal about what he has for us, each and one of us. About what he wants to reveal about even those people that you're sometimes praying for that you don't want to pray for. Amen? We were, uh, it was an honor and a privilege. It humbles us. We were at ASU last week preaching at the campus in ASU in Tempe. And as I was seeing the young people pass by, there were hundreds and thousands passing by as we were ministering there. And I can see their faces. I don't know, I just saw a lot of sad faces. A lot of faces without any emotion. It was just so sad. And I was like, God, how, how, how do you want me to pray for these people? It's like the zombies walking around. I'm back and forth to the classes, back and do what they got to do. But we have the privilege and honor of speaking to many out there still. And, and some of them opened their hearts and, you know, they didn't know who Jesus was. So they had heard of him. We put a, a sign that said, who is Jesus? An icon uh, with the, a lunatic, with the a legend, with the, the Lord God. And we even had other, right? And it was sad to see some of these people, what they thought of him or didn't even know him. Even though their parents knew him, some of them didn't know him. So I think it's our job to open up 
that, that get, remove that veil off of even our children, that they may see that we serve a mighty and powerful God, that they can have revelation and wisdom that so when they're in school and something is taught that doesn't belong to the word according to the morals of God, that they can stand up and say something about it. Amen? 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 That's our children we're talking about. And that's how God wants to talk to us where people that we don't hate also God wants to send us to minister to those people that we don't like even to. That's our heart, the heart of God, the revelation that we want to give us. Number two, the unmade man, mind cannot understand spiritual truth. Here we go. We need living understanding that only comes from the Spirit of God, oh, the Holy Spirit. Amen. It says the strongest eyes are useless when a person is in total darkness. The natural man has no spiritual sight. The scripture is more than intellectual ideas, but it is an unveiling of spiritual things which requires the supernatural capacities given by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 2.12 to 14 says this. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12 to 14 says this. And now we have received the Spirit that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. What did it cost you? Nothing. So the natural man, unaided mind, says, do not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can we know them. The only way to know what God has for us what God wants to do is be to awaken to the Holy Spirit, that he awaken us, that he enlighten us with the word of God. Even Jesus called out the Pharisees, amen? He goes, you guys look beautiful. You guys are adorned beautiful. You look like priests and all that, right? The people see you and all that. He goes, but inside you are, you are so empty, he goes. You're like an empty tomb. That's what he called them. He called them out. There's theologians that know the word back and forth, and they can quote it, this and that, but they are missing. They're not connected to the river of life. And they're missing out in the revelations of God. It says that we are going to be planted next to a river, right? It talks about in Psalms that we are planted. We got to be connected to the vine, which is Christ himself. Amen? We're going to go point, uh, if you got your outlines already, <clears throat> excuse me, point F, I mean E, that you may know. What did that say? The Greek word for knowledge, epignoid, refers to experiential knowledge, which is much more than informational knowledge of true facts about God. To know or encounter God is the essence of eternal salvation. Ouch. Eternal salvation, Amen. That's our main focus. John 17, 3 says this, and this is the way to have eternal life. That's our focus, to know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. You think Paul had an encounter with Christ? You think he had a revelation of who he was? That he is the only way that was eternal life through him? Yes, we know because he had a turnaround, right? He had a major turnaround and started preaching the gospel with fire. Even though his life was in danger, he started preaching it because he knew what his main purpose was. Philippians 3.10 says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. What did he say? Here we go again. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from where? From the dead. Ouch. The one you sent. I'm sorry. I <laughs> jumped up here. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. 
That's the kind of love. That's the kind of experience that they had. They had such a revelation of the experience of the mighty power of God that we see a man that was before him that we talked about, Stephen, when he was stoned. He was being stoned by his enemies, the one he was preaching love to, and God's promises, and God, what God wanted to do to these people who were speaking. And he was being stoned. As he was being stoned, he looked up and saw the glory of the Father and the son seated at the right hand. He had an encounter with God right there when he was putting put to death. Oh my gosh, isn't that amazing? I want to go out like that. I want to go out like that. He didn't feel a thing. He felt nothing but love unto the people that were stoning him, calling about him. All those things. He goes, God forgive them for they know not what they do. Wow. I want to have that encounter. Amen. That then we know him. Foundational to Paul's approach to discipleship is that the heart of a believer be enlightened. I like to put the word awaken. That's not the word that gives me, the Lord puts in my heart. Awaken. It takes God to know God. Amen. That's the only way you're going to know him. I'm sorry, but it's going to take God an encounter with him to know him. <clears throat> Sorry, I might throw here. Um, it says, does we earnestly pray for more to Paul? This was the primary need for the Ephesians believers. It is the most powerful influence that equips us for the wholeheartedness. I pray, Lord, let me see what Paul saw so that I can see and obey you like Paul did. That's my prayer. And I pray that we have that encounter, that awakening unto our spirit, unto our mind, that we may see God. And the only way is to have an encounter with him. Roman number two, it says the hope of his calling. The hope of his calling. Paul's first specific request was that they have confidence related to God's calling for their lives. And I think we forget sometimes what God wants to do in our lives. I mean, he wants to be confident, have a confident related to God's calling for their lives. Says, God's calling on our lives includes our calling to be in eternal, in his eternal family. And that's back in Ephesians 1, 3 to 14. But, here's the big but, it says, but it also includes his divine assignment for our lives. And this is where we miss out, a lot of us. His divine assignment. We think that we are now in family God. Everybody's getting along. All right, that's great. But you forget about your divine assignment that, call, that God has called you out for. In this age, and here we go, in the age to come. So we're not being set up only here and, and, and getting our lives right here, but for the, what God's going to do with us when we go to heaven with him. Amen. He's going to have it tailor-made. And it says, in other words, Paul prayed that this, the people would receive living understanding about how God views their calling. We are adopted sons and daughters now. We belong with him. So that means God's going to be revealing his wisdom and revelation. Ephesians 1, 17, 18 says again, that the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom. So if you lack it, you can ask the Father. If you're connected to God and you know him, says that you may ask the Spirit of God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who? Him. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. Hallelujah. Point number B here in Roman number two says that, and the divine assignment in our lives has two dimensions, internal and external, in two, in two time frames, temporal and eternal. We need revelation in these because by nature we have a wrong perspective. Internal is a, the life and the heart to grow. External is how we impact other people. Point number one says we need a paradigm shift in each of these areas. Number two, what God values and plans is opposite of what we naturally value and plan. Whoa. That's so true, amen? Only by revelation, though, can we understand to look through God's eyes, 
to see what he sees and he wants us to see. So if you have a problem right now where you said, God, how do you want to direct me? How do you want to send me? What do you want me to do in my job where I'm at in my career right now or, or, or as a youth leader or whatever or wherever you're working? If you need that, God can show you through his eyes what he wants to do. Even when you're doing what you're doing right now, God wants to speak to you and show you. Let us see. God has tailor-made a calling or assignment for each person's lives. That includes both the present and the future. Wow. He knows the past, the present, and in the future. Wow. God can set it up. So if you're lacking direction right now, you can ask him right now and say, Father, I need direction for my life. I just got laid off or I got this new job or God, I feel like I want to go this way. What do you say about me? Where have you placed me in the future, Lord God? Where is it that you're putting me that may be also not just for what I want to get to, but God, what did you want to put me there for? Why did you plant me in that area? Why did you put me in that job? Why did you put me to volunteer there? Why did you put me in that church? What do you want to talk to me on? Amen? Because he had tailor-made a calling and an assignment. You say, I want you to get this in. Specifically for you where you're at. And what God wants to do with your life. Hallelujah. Colossians 1.9 says, We do not cease to pray for you. That you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. Hallelujah. This is something we got to be praying constantly. Amen. If you're not filled yet. If you don't fill with the knowledge of him, of his will yet, then what does it say here? We do not cease to pray for you. Keep praying for each other. Keep praying for each one of us. Amen? Colossians 4.12 says this. Epaphras, always laboring. How? Fervently. Fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. How many of you want that? How many of you want that? Okay, it says right here though, always praying, laboring fervently. That's the only way to get there. And that's the way God gives us the place where to go to be immovable. So we be, be perfect, complete in the will of God. Letter D, it says, our internal calling, our primary calling in the age and this age is internal. We are to say and do what he said and did like the Sermon on the Mount lifestyle. Without regard to the, to the honor or money that we receive or the size of the, our impact or influence, our internal calling is to be a faithful disciple of Jesus. You can be working as a surgeon. The other day I had a testimony uh, yesterday when I passed by at the food pantry and I heard a testimony uh, somebody, me and my wife know, and she was telling me about that her, her, their brother and, and, and his wife, they're surgeons, yet they have a church, yet they have home groups right there where they're at. Are they in the will of Christ? Are they doing what Christ wanted them? Are they faithful disciples of Jesus? Like, wow, right there where you're at. Doesn't matter where you're at. God can do something with you. That loves, they said, disciple of Jesus that loves God and embraces what the world calls foolish. <laughs> Meaning humility, serving, giving, praying, and forgiving. The development of your heart will be, will be the only thing that you will bring to this age. But what God wants to do with you in the age to come. It says, our external calling in this age, it says, this aspect of our divine assignment includes our position and our focus on when considering their calling. This is an important part of our calling. However, it is the least important aspect of God's calling on our lives. There's greater things to do than just our calling here to be a, a great worker or having this career or this business. There's greater calling. Our greater calling is the internal calling. Amen? This is the prayer that Paul had. So here we go. Point number one um, on letter D. It says, history testifies that the Lord has given us the, the vast majority of people 
This is an assignment involved few things that makes very little public impact as individuals. In terms of the numbers directly impacted of the proximity, one billion believers today, my guess is, it says maybe by only 1,000 of them directly impacted, 10,000 or more on a regular basis. Meaning that there's a lot of us that are believers and we impact only a few amount of people around us only. And that we got to let God do what he's got to do. Even if you impact one person, though, see, here's the thing I want to I wanna share with you. Luke 19, 17 says this. You are faithful in the very little, have authority over ten cities. We don't have to, we shouldn't despise the small beginnings that God gives us. Where we're at, where we're starting, whatever it is that God is putting you, do not despise the small beginnings. Matthew 25, 21 says, you are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Matthew 25, 1. That was it right there. That's what God wants us to do. It says, we will not be evaluated by the impact, by, by, but by their, the faithfulness that we work in the spirit of God and the revelation of God. That was God's going to say. So if you have a small group or you're ministering one or two people, be faithful at it. A lot of people say get, get this, this uh, discouraged and they go, oh, man, by now I should have uh, been like a, uh, you know, certain preacher or certain ministers impacting doubts and this and that. I'm sorry, but if that's not your calling, it's okay. Be faithful in where you're at. And those two people, be faithful. In the small group, be faithful. Because God's going to give you what it says right here. And the very little have authority over ten cities. He says, and a few things, if you're faithful, he says, what? You'll be rulers over many things. Be faithful where you're at. You're teaching the kids, pour out all you got onto the kids. You're teaching the youth, pour out onto them everything that God has given you and more. Because that's what God wants you to be at, at that moment. So be faithful in that area and pour out what God has given you. And if you see later results, be faithful, be faithful. It takes months, be faithful. If it takes years, be faithful. If it takes a decade, be faithful. Amen? And that's our God right there. How long have we been serving God, babe? Many years, right? We don't want to say that, right? The age. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, my God is faithful. And we try to be as faithful as we can. And this is what God is doing. Amen? For a lot of us. You see, we can compare this lifetime to a really, it's a really a 70-year internship that we're living right now. Getting ready for what God wants to do and the many things and the big, bigger picture that God has for us. This is a temporal thing. This is a, a residency if you're going to be a doctor, right? This is a, a study because you're going to work in those 70 years to be working with him in the millennial, whatever it is, on many years. Many, many, many years. Well, it's the 70 years. That's nothing, he says, for everything I want to do with you, where I want to use you. Point number three in our life, change when we have assurance that the small things that we do in seeking obey God are valuable to him. He esteems and remembers them forever, Matthew 10, 42. Hallelujah. So I got that one. I don't, Sorry. Matthew 10, 4, oh, there it is, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it says, and whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, right? As surely I say to you, he shall be by no means lose his what? Reward. Wow. How many of you want to be part of that? The letter F says, our eternal calling Eternal calling, maybe the millennial or whatever, the, whatever after with God. It says, the impact or the measure of God's glory that the Spirit will release through us in the age to come will be much greater than it is in this age. It makes revelation to see that our greatest measure of power and ministry impact is in the age to come. By revelation, we see that faithfulness in little now leads to ruling over ten cities. In the age to come, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 18 says this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18 says, For our light affliction, 
which is but for a moment, is working for us as for more exceedingly, exceeding an eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but as the thing, at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things what, that are not seen are what? Eternal. Ephesians 1.14 says, Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption? I'm sorry, I jumped around there. I shouldn't have gone there yet. I'm going to stop right here. I got two more points, but I'm going to stop. Lack of time, but God, I can't believe, I love these prayers. If we really get into them, we start looking at it, what God has for each and one of us. If we look at the prayers that they did, that they dared to do, right? If we dare to remove what the enemy has been wanting to be a stumbling block. That's what the other word that the Lord gave me. Removing the stumbling blocks that the enemy has been wanting to put up in our lives. If we dare to believe God for what he wants to do and is doing, God can do great and mighty things. Amen? Let's get in our feet really quick here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Two more, wow. I thought I was going to get through more, but I guess God has a lot for us today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for these prayers, Father God, that the, your apostles did, Father God. Lord, I want to take them to heart, Father God. I want them to be prayers that shift history. Lord God, let us be prayer warriors, people of God. That when we prayed, there is a shifting going on in history. And right now, Father God, there's some critical things that need a shift, Father God, in our nation, Lord God. And I'm excited for what's going on, Father God, in Kentucky, Father God. But, Lord God, I don't want to just be excited. I want to be part of it here in Covenant of Grace. Amen. Amen? And God does not limit us. God is unlimited. That's what he was saying. He goes, there is nothing impossible for our God. If we cry out here in covenant, we can see his mighty hand even more of what he wants to pour out. That's all the kids over there are receiving. They're just receiving the love of the Father, his mercy, his grace just being poured out. I saw, and there was nobody important there except the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit moving. Father, we ask you that you be the important one here, Father God, in coming in grace. That you take over, Lord God, that you remove us, Lord, that we die, that you live, Father God. That we may exalt you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I know you're not done with healing today, Father. Lord God, you want to heal today still, Father God. You are not done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you're still hurting a bit, you think that God is not done. Hey, man, hallelujah. Be in agreement with me that God wants to bring healing on this morning. Lord God, bring healing. Father God, where there is pain. Father God, we're talking about spiritual also. We're talking about physical pain. Lord, that there is nothing that you cannot do, Lord God. The enemy has lied enough where he says, you come up to here, but that's not true, Lord God. You have no line. There is no limit for you. All things are possible in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we kick out doubt. Father, we kick you. Be kicking out still unbelief, Father, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus, Lord God. Even if it's a process, amen, Father God, but you can do it. You can do it, Father God. And we today, Father God, are in agreement of the body of Christ that you will be doing miracles, signs, and wonders that your name, that the name of Jesus may be glorified and nobody else but the name of Jesus, that they know that the Father is visiting covenant and grace, that the Father is showing up because there's a lot of hurting children out there that are in need of this love of the Father. Lord God, there are many here. There's some, Father God, I feel that you want to pour out your love on some here today, Father. Pour it out, Father, in the name of Jesus. Pour out your love. Pour out your love. Do not hold back, Lord. Do not hold back. Pour out your love, Father. Derrama de tu amor, Padre, en esta mañana, Señor. 
Aleluya siento de Dios que quiere derramar de su amor Para Él no hay límite, no hay barreras Dios te quiere mover, aleluya entre su pueblo Él quiere sanar y serte libre No nomás del dolor físico pero también espiritual Dios quiere hacer una obra en esta mañana No ha terminado Thank you Father, thank you Lord You are so good Father You are so good. And today we receive the healing that you have for each and one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give him praise. Amen. You want to give him? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God is so good. Amen. I just want to. I just want to give a simple word that that I received. Um, it was actually during our international service uh, a few weeks back, and and first of all, I want to apologize for not being obedient to the Lord at that point, because um, God's God's getting ready. He wants to do some things in our midst. You know, He's calling on us, and the simple words that I got. Um, was the first thing was that there was going to be an explosion, an explosion here. And, you know, I, I just think that that means the Holy Spirit coming to us. And we're hungry, and the more hungry we get, the, the more God will come and minister in his presence. But he wants to bring an explosion among all of his people. And um, the, the second thing is that he wants to challenge us, and it goes so along with your word uh, today, Emilio. So, um, and that was that God wants to, to use each and every one of us, and he is trying to use each and every one of us. And, and what he said is that there were many that were saying, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. And when God says something to your heart, we'll speak to that person. We say, oh, I'm not qualified. I can't do that. And two words I heard the Lord say, stop it. <laughs> stop it. It's not you anyway. It's, it's the presence of the Lord. We can't be righteous ourselves. We can't be bold ourselves. We can't be anything ourselves without him. And if he tells you to do something, you need to do it. Amen? So look to your neighbor and tell them, stop it. <laughs> but, but look to yourself. Look to yourself and say, say stop it. That I'm, I'm going to do what the Lord tells me to do. He's looking for obedience, isn't he, in our lives. And... You know, it just boggles my mind, you know, that myself or any of us, when he tells us to take a step here or take a step there or speak, open our mouths, do something, sing for him. When he tells us to do it, the goal for us to not do it. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the one who rules in our lives. And we are going to need to be taking the steps that he tells us to in these coming days. There is so much going on, so much. And it just, we are living in the end times and we need to be obedient to him. So how many of you want to be obedient to him? Just lift your hand right now and say, Lord, not by might or power, but by your Holy Spirit, I want to be obedient to you. I want to speak, Lord. I want to speak those words to those in need. Father, if you've given me a teaching in my heart, I want to share it with the people you want me to share it with. God, we pray for our kids, for our youth. Father, that you raise them up, Lord God, to be obedient servants of yours, Lord. We just ask for that explosion to come in this place, Lord. Jesus, we're hungry for you, Lord. We're thirsty for you, Lord God. And we just say, come, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.
Amen. Isn't that amazing? God is so good. Keep pouring out, God. We don't want to hold back. Amen. It's really quick. Somebody wants to know this Jesus that we're speaking about. Maybe you have never heard of him. We would love to pray a prayer with you. Amen. Simple prayer. It says, and say these words with me. Repeat them. Let the Lord be Savior and Lord of your life on this morning. Repeat these words. Say, God, I recognize that I have to be, have lived my own life. I have been living for myself. I need you in my life, Jesus. I want you in my life, Jesus. I acknowledge and completed work of the Son, Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross. And I long to receive the forgiveness you had freely made available to me through this sacrifice. Come into my life now, Lord. Take up residence in my heart. Be the King, my Lord, and my Savior from this day forward. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Anybody of you received the Lord as your Savior for the first time? Anybody? Anybody? No? We would still love to pray for you. We we're going to have people up front right here who would love to pray for you. Amen? So we're going to have a prayer team come up right now. So I just want to bless you and let the Lord keep you with this word. Hallelujah. Lord God, we ask you, Lord, you bless, Father God, your people, Lord God. May you keep them in your mighty hands, Lord God. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace on this day. Hallelujah. On this week in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And bless you. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Thank you. Want to pray? Hey. Oh, Brother Doug. She is up to the Lord and Savior. Wow, amen. The Lord went through French, amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family. We would love to pray for you. We're going to have people uh, give you some uh, stuff, okay? Thank you very much. God bless you. Like I said, if you need prayer, we have uh, people up here that would love to pray for you. Thank you. God bless you.